Well, ladies, I decided to do a really tough one here with Real Crop Ready. <laughs> we are putting on liquid nitrogen, as you can see. Probably won't be turning around near as much as I usually do. GPS does work to a point if you put your crops in with GPS. So, some of this stuff might be pretty easy. Uh, majority of my fields I am going to have to do all by myself trying to figure this all out and everything okay so it is not done correctly but this uh, liquid nitrogen applicator does go down to 11 row units which is correct for a 12 row planter because you're gonna always have that one hanging uh, you'd be double applying it there on the end so as you can see I'm still struggling trying to stay in the right rows and this looks to be working pretty good the work area is kind of separated also. I mean, with the way Farm Sim is set up, your first growth state of corn, you don't run it over. You can change that in your fruit types uh, XML and all that fancy jumbo and whatnot. So we're going to have to hurry up and get all this applied before the next growth state and I start running over corn because that's going to be hectic. And the other part of realism that it brings in is you need to be alert when you're planting your corn to make everything else easier. Now, as you can see on the little end rows where you turn, it plants uh, some more crops. So therefore, yeah, I'd be running them over. I'd be losing a lot of corn here. So that's why we're going to get it done. Alright, so now that the explanation is done and over with, we are going to jump right into the storyline. Well, ladies, welcome to the 4th Gen Dairy Farmer here. We are side dressing our nitrogen, and a buddy of mine, a couple counties away, decided that he needed to upgrade his custom nitrogen applicator. And by that, I mean his whole his whole system so I got a nice 8200 here set on 120 wheel spacing which works out for my planner and he said before he trades it in he'd just rent it to me he's out honestly thinking about just renting it out to you know every farmer that wants to use it rather than selling it he didn't really for sure know what he was going to do this year kind of keeping it around asking around to some of the people he does custom work for and he said he if he holds on to it this year it's no big deal he'll use the tractor come fall anyways he'll put the tires back on and everything uh i'll show you guys a little walk around at some point but i'm paying for this per hour that i have it not even the hours on the engine but the hours i have it here because he states that the it could be making him money if he choose to. So I need to hurry up, get my fields done, so that he has it available again. And with doing this, it makes it kind of challenging for the first time ever. It's The GPS is not in this tractor for my stuff, which I really don't have full GPS on the tractor. It's just uh, not... Auto steer, what's that other one called? I'm drawing a blank. But it just helps you drive in straight roads, you know? Kind of like, supposed to minimize you overlapping and everything like that. So it's not... The GPS isn't going to help me anyways, let's put it that way. But I got this nice applicator here that uh, holds roughly 3,000 gallons. He was able to bring me a spare tank he said he didn't need at the moment because he'd like to be able to rent the tank with the applicator. So he upgraded the uh, 
Oh, God. Drawing a blank again. The service trailer. <laughs> that goes on a... It's not really on a pickup trailer by any means. It's just one of them you can pull behind your planter, you know. But you can pull it with a tractor... Or a truck. Easy. Wow. I'm just struggling today. Trying to pay attention, I suppose. The nice part... I don't have to I mean the the minimal amount of damage I'm gonna do with this applicator isn't anything to be worried about it isn't like our old school hold on let me count one two three oh crap where am I I think right here I think this is gonna be the worst part is the damage from my tires if I get it off a row not so much the row units themselves all right we're on the right row but um the row units are so small back there they're literally just spacing it wide enough so the half inch hose or a quarter inch hose whatever it is can get in the ground and drip some nitrogen down there it's nothing crazy I doubt I'll use all the nitrogen he has here anyways he did run it across his scale he does it by weight so he knows exactly what things are per gallon and whatnot but uh, he always double checks with a scale at his house that he uses anyways so when it's all said and done if I have to get any more well, no, but I have to kind of get close with that last load because he doesn't want too much sitting in that tank. Obviously, he'll use it, but it's just one of those try to use every last drop I got without going too much or without using too little. Now, I will have to tell him my biggest complaint is that he left these dang fenders on here. Kind of gets difficult to see where your tires pointing and the turns and I think I'm off a row again maybe maybe not I can't see with the, where I overlapped and everything I knew I should have ran that row cultivator through it but that's also the other offset of it you can take out some of your population with the row cultivator which is fine for the endros but with all these curves and contours I got in my fields, I wasn't going to go that route. You're risking taking out a lot more than what you actually planned on. You turn a little bit with it, with it being on the rear three point like that, and you're going to wipe out a lot. And then pretty much stop, lift up, readjust, set it back down, and go again. I've done it. Don't like doing it. Don't see the need to do it. Ooh, got to get in here and spray these weeds at some point. Hopefully the co-op gets out here soon and does their round of spraying on it. We did put down some pre-emergence, but it didn't work good in this field. I wonder if they messed something up or got a bad batch or whatever, you know. They probably messed something up. Shouldn't have been coming up this thick. But we'll get that taken care of. So yeah, here we go, running nitrogen with a side dresser that I don't know where I'm at. We're just going to hope we're on the right row, and then when we start turning again, <laughs> that I'm not way off. I lost count, not paying attention again. I haven't kicked it up to as fast as he said we could run it. Just got to get comfortable with it first. And I also got to be constantly thinking on how I'm going to uh, turn around on these crazy endros. I probably just got to go all the way to the very end. This one's pretty simple. This will be self-explanatory. But where the endros meet with the straight rows, I'm going to have to contemplate pretty closely just to minimize my damage to the corn. Um, just a little quick update on the chopping. Hopefully the part for the mower comes in quick. 
I I need some more. I didn't get near enough off of it. I'm glad I got enough corn planted this year to chop, but I'm dreading that <laughs> also. It's going to take some time to get through all this corn. I don't have the money to do custom chopping this year. I don't have the equipment to hammer through it my uh, with a self-propelled chopper and go wherever I want. So it's going to be, like I said before, we're just going to get the neighbor to come over, do his little bit of earlage, and um, opening up my fields for me. And that's going to be pretty much it. Now, where did I... Ooh. Not the best idea to back up when you're doing endros. I can tell you that right now. But we are going to damage a few, take a few, and hope that we're back on track. Alright, there you have it. We're going to roll with this and try to kick it up a couple notches. And get some uh, side dressing done before I got to go in and milk this afternoon. And then I'll be back tomorrow hopefully with some more content for you guys on some side dressing. I'll try to get into that other field there. That with all the contours, keep track of that stuff. Oofta, I lost my rose. That ain't good. Hopefully we're right on the money. The nice part with this applicator, it runs off your ground speed anyways. It runs off the a wheel off of your main wheel of the unit, so... As I adjust speed, it's adjusting the rate. Now, I don't have GPS to know where I'm at and everything. We're just putting this on at a steady rate to get the corn popped up even bigger, give it a boost. And then when the co-op comes through, they'll drip some nitrogen on here later on, just around the tasseling time. Can't tell where I'm at again. Oof. That one's hard unless you make a mistake and leave something open on the endros. I wish I could see my marker yet, where I put my marker down. That's exactly where I need to go with the tractor. I'm just not seeing it. That rain kind of settled everything real nice. I'm not complaining about the rain one bit. We need every last bit we can get. Now, if it stays a little dry for the next handful of days, week or so, I'm not going to complain either. That means the corn's going to suck this nitrogen right up. I think we're on track here. Pretty sure. Tractor turns pretty good for being 120 inch spacing and I like it better because everything kind of tracks right around pretty good the best tractors I ever seen for this was the old Genesis tractors with the super steer it everything kind of followed the front wheels so you're doing very minimal amount of damage on your endros but a lot of people go away from this and they just run a big sprayer. Which, I could have had the guys come out with a applicator on the front of their sprayer. But that was going to be even more money than this unit here. So, I have to take what I can get. As of right now, because with the... Uh, after doing silage, I'm going to have to chop that entire field of alfalfa you see there. That's going to be my next mission once I get side dressing of the corn done. It's finish that field and every last bit of it will get chopped for silage. To get me through I'll have to buy some hay bales which is going to be crazy expensive 
unless we get a nice rain this summer and they got a lot of growth. Right now they're talking we could be in a drought, so therefore hay's going to get pretty expensive here. Now this is what I was talking with, like how the end rows come around to the straight rows. Got to make sure I get far enough down to catch my straight rows, but also try to keep my damage down to a minimum. I think I'm getting it figured out. I think. Now I am also leaving it down through the waterways. I know it's kind of frowned upon, but my first go around I'm just going to do it this way so I don't have to worry about missing anything, messing anything up. We just take it nice and easy. There's not too many rocks on this field here. I'm not too concerned about it. As we get into the back 40, I'm going to have to watch my speed, watch out for rocks. And that's why I like a 12 row. Now this thing is also, if you guys notice on the ends as I come around, this thing has the brackets for another arm out there. The deal with that is, it is built for 16 row, or excuse me, 15 rows to be technical, but a 16 row planter. So we could go bigger if we wanted to but he does this so he has an option to stick with a 12 row or he could go up to a 16 row and I know it's big and you're missing out on the 8 row guys but the 8 row guys if they're that small either they're having a co-op do it or they're doing it themselves and he's thought about buying an 8 row applicator but it just doesn't pay good enough so he's sticking true to where he's at, and that's the whole reason he doesn't know if he wants to lease this or not. First, you got to find the help. Second, you got to feed the animal you just created. And third, more acres you cover, the more you get paid. So therefore, keep it big. Don't worry about the six, eight row guys. Just worry about the 12, 20, or 12 16, and 24 row guys. And then you can get enough acres covered pretty dang good. I think I'm doing pretty good. I think so. Let me know down in the comments on this video here, guys. Uh, how do you feel like I'm doing? Alright, that's enough of me talking. Let's get into it, listen to some music, and party. I just realized I was way off of my rows. Thank God I didn't take out a full row. I don't think I got it straightened out. We're gonna do it in the waterway, straighten it out. We're gonna have like four rows out here just getting crazy tall compared to every other one. Overlapping some. It happens when you're learning new things. Let's see how fast or how good I can go straight while looking backwards. All right, like I said, let's uh, sit back, relax, and party here.
Wowzers, that's one heck of a difference after you've been in a tented cab for a while, but I'm going to go take care of milking these cows there, ladies, and we are going to get um, fed for the night, and I'll bring you back once we are done and going into that field over there. So I was way off on what I thought that tank holds. We're only at a thousand gallons. I am, wow, I was way off, but yeah. It's a nice unit, 8,400, and, oh, yeah, I might have said that wrong, too. 8,400, we are going to burn over across the road here and get some more side dressing done. It'll be a time lapse again, but you guys can sit back and watch me struggle for the end rows, at least. I'm going to go around a little ways. And then I'm going to really have to start focusing. I probably won't record too much at that point in time. All right, here it goes.
Well, ladies, there you have it. That's all I'm going to be able to record for right now, but I'm going to go get some supper and come back out, try to burn into the midnight oil. With the tint on the tractor, I don't know how late I'm going to get. But again, thanks for watching. And also, hey, again, go ahead, let me know how I did down in the comments. Let me have it, ladies. Till next time.